We most recently covered the remarkable discovery, fortunately made in the presence of numerous parties, from a number of international research panels, including media personnel. Fortunate for reasons we previously covered in our last video regarding the difficulty when such an event occurs, in such a situation, to suppress it in the modern age, and the subsequent unusual characteristics of said discovery. A discovery the world has been fortunate to witness, further cementing mounting evidence for the past existence of an ancient giant civilization. With this next discovery, although completely different in characteristics, we feel its scale alone, with other intriguing features, makes it as equally perplexing. An apparent polar opposite approach in some areas, such as methodology and symbology, even including stones selected. Yet another enigmatic mystery currently sprouting up all over the Giza Plateau. What we found initially interesting was, just like the other enormous tomb we have covered prior, its sheer size, estimated at nearly 9 feet tall and 3.5 feet wide just on the insides. Amazingly, it also initially appeared and was initially presumed to have still somehow been a mysteriously hermetically sealed tomb. This is where the open presses line runs out unfortunately, for although it would seem the sarcophagus has indeed been opened, it has been done privately by the Smithsonian Institute. The details of what was found inside, what sort of remains, and indeed their claimed identity, continue to be a closely guarded secret and a subject of hot debate, with the Smithsonian merely stating, further examinations on the body found inside are being conducted. According to the head of Egypt's Supreme Council of Antiquities, quote, there has been a remarkable find in the coastal city of Alexandria. During a routine excavation, experts uncovered a baffling Ptolemaic stone sarcophagus. It has been hailed as a major find, as it can provide insights into the great Hellenistic period in Egypt and its unique culture." End quote. Regardless of academic historians and certain institutions instantly pushing the notion that they know all about this incredible find, and also what exactly could have been found within that black sarcophagus, we find the ordeal highly compelling. There are varying, unexplainable ruins, which either due to their location or sheer enormity are almost universally known and recognizable. Yet nearly all possess hidden factors and layers of truth within, simply unexplainable by mainstream academia. Yet, along with these tourist magnets, there are an equal number of ruins not well known. Some due to their remote global position, but others due to being actively ignored, and it is these in particular which are of interest to us. As this motivation to ignore such sites must be based on an ulterior motive, this lack of academic funding to explore such sites, we believe, and also have discovered to be true over and over again, lies within their controversial and inexplicable nature. And like a set straight out of Indiana Jones, the claimed lost tombs of Mitla are of no exception. Hidden within the Mesoamerican sites of Mexico, it is indeed visited by tourists, yet many are left perplexed once they depart. This labyrinth of carefully constructed megalithic tunnels, when looked at critically and honestly, baffle all who investigate the site. Unique factors include its unusual yet impressive structural design, its competent, delicate stone-cut patterning not even attempted to be attributed to being Mesoamerican, and simply the overall bizarrely unique method of construction. We feel it has been claimed and either lazily or conspiratorially simply written up as a Mesoamerican ruin, with its location nestled amongst this enormous, magnificent complex of pyramids, a still existing part of the lost ancient world vastly helping in this attempt to explain away its origins. Some of the monolithic lintels employed in the passages of this site, some claiming as an ancient palace, 
while far more believing it to have once been the now lost tombs of Mitla, possesses a particularly large collection of stones. Known as the Columns Group, measuring 6 meters long, a series of solid basalt megaliths with an estimated weight in excess of 30 tons. The stones came from quarries located a distance of over 10 kilometers away, carried from the lower side of a valley. As mentioned, the location has been coined the lost tomb of Mitla. Yet the reality is that Mitla was not a person, but is a long-sought location for the burial of incredibly important historical figures. The name Mitla derived from the Nahuatl name of the same spelling, meaning the place of the dead or underworld. Thus, it must be noted that although this site is of an extraordinary nature, nine miles away, other megalithic tombs built from equally massive megaliths have since been found, shedding even more doubt on its true purpose being that of the tombs of Mitla. Yet, regardless, to academic claims that it is a standard Mesoamerican ruin, we find such sites highly compelling. Countless talented, valiant souls spanning all throughout modern history have been publicly lambasted for their troubles. Not only are such readings and results regularly scoffed at, and any subsequent finding, all stemming from their honest admittance that their data showed evidence of inhabitation with, quote, underestimated prehistoric dates. Many of these artifacts and ruins, claimed as being a mere few centuries old, we have, due to extensive research into similarities and differentiations at many of these sites, managed to locate signature stonework within the structure's outer walls, clearly submerged and perfectly preserved for untold millennia. Indicative of many inexplicable sites around the world, which some even claim are upwards of 300 million years old. The Great Pyramids, along with their Great Sphinx, we feel, with the substantial evidence we have previously put forward, is a treasure trove of examples, for when one becomes aware of Giza's anomalies at least, can expose those fed a lie, the impossibilities within said conspiracy theory, and begin to realize more and more unexplainable anomalies helping others to realize just how impossibly difficult these structures would have been to create. A feat when considered by many, especially those with a good idea for the sheer size of this place, find the reality that the plateau was possibly man-made very hard to conceive. Subsequently, still concealing many secrets, which we feel is the purpose of the plateau being created in the first place. And although it seemingly spans far from the feet of the gigantic pyramidic trio and their accompanying sphinx, we feel this was deliberate and not naturally formed. According to computer engines, the stresses within the Great Pyramid itself were perfectly calculated. However, the main strut or lintel in the Grand Gallery is cracked, indicating pulley systems or other heavy technology was still atop the structure once built this extra weight has been hypothesized was an oversight. Furthermore, any attempts to reconstruct these incredible buildings by using computer systems to simulate supposed slave attempts, we still, to this day, cannot find a valid working technique. However, if one ups the size of the being, their strength, and indeed their intellect, not only were the pyramids within reach, but also many other baffling megalithic areas, such as polygonal masonry, all could be explained. Additionally, along with this hypothesis, many giant-sized sarcophagi have been found throughout Giza. Yet we feel, covered up, dismissed as clearly what they are tombs, in favor of explaining them away as storage cases. Who built ancient Egypt? When did they build it? How did they build it? Questions which need to be answered. Questions which we find highly compelling. On the 25th of January, 2011, the streets of Cairo were being ravaged by a rioting population, demanding the end of President Hosni Mubarak's 30-year regime. While the world was distracted by the dramatic scenes of chaos upon the streets above, 
deep within the ancient dusty tunnels, a team of archaeologists led by Suzanne Bickel of the University of Basel in Switzerland was quietly making one of the most significant discoveries of the past century. They had initially found the top of a large round stone at the eastern end of the Valley of the Kings. The archaeologists suspected that it was just the top of an abandoned shaft, but before they could investigate, due to Egypt's political process regarding finds within the valley, they had to cover the stone rim with their own locked iron door, inform the Egyptian authorities, and apply for an official permit to excavate. A year later, after gaining approval to excavate, Bickel returned with a team of two dozen people, including field director Elena Paula Goth of the University of Basel, Egyptian inspector Ali Rita, and local workmen. Each took turns lying on the ground, head pressed against the shaft wall, one arm through a small hole next to the capstone, snapping photographs. They left little doubt that it was indeed an ancient tomb. On top of the debris rested a dusty black coffin, carved from sycamore wood and decorated with large yellow hieroglyphs on its sides and top. Bickel has stated that she has never seen an Egyptian coffin in such a good condition before. The dating of fragments of pottery made from Nile silt and pieces of plaster, commonly used to seal tomb entrances in ancient times, together with the age of the other nearby sites, have indicated that the tomb could be more than 3,000 years old. The hieroglyphs describe the tomb's occupant as being named Nahimi's Bastet. Egyptologists currently believe she was a lady of the upper class and of Amun. People have been claiming there was nothing new left to find in the Valley of the Kings for almost as long as they have been digging there. The Venetian antiquarian Giovanni Belzoni believed he had emptied the last of the valley's tombs during his 1817 expedition, while Theodore Davis, who excavated there a century later, came to a similar conclusion right before Tutankhamun's burial chamber was found. Fortunately, there is a growing number of people who are beginning to suspect that there is a wealth of discoveries still left to be made in the Valley of the Kings, the Nile Delta, and Egyptian as a whole. And thanks to discoveries such as these, interest in these existing mysteries grows by the day. It is interesting to see that in this period, even a wealthy girl was buried with quite simple things, Bickel says, comparing Nahim's Bastet's coffin and steel with the elaborate pottery, furniture, and food found in earlier tombs. Her wooden coffin was certainly quite expensive, she says, but nonetheless, it lacked the elaborate inner coffins found in similar burials. Is this the burial chamber of an extremely ancient queen? After reinforcing the coffin and securing the mummy, Bickel's team have transported across the Nile to Luxor, where a full investigation is currently being undertaken into the true identity of the mystery female. With substantial insight into the controversial finds within ancient Egypt, we personally suspect that often the tombs, which appear the most crudely designed, containing wooden sarcophagus, are generally found to be the most ancient. Furthermore, their hieroglyphic writings were often far more exquisite in nature. Could this be the discovery of an original burial? And the crude hieroglyphic claim of the occupant's identity a fake? Hiding the delta's true antiquity? A secret many fringe scientists have begun to believe is being protected by Egyptian antiquities. Many have come to suspect the Egyptians merely copied the original builders of the pyramids after taking occupation of their structures many years later. Supportive evidence for these claims comes in many forms. Erosion upon the pyramids, and especially the Sphinx, including over 100 underground chambers we are currently researching, discovered under Giza in 1995 by a team led by Kent Weeks, which also show strong evidence of several flash flooding events involving seawater throughout their long existence. The lack of any written detail pertaining to the construction of either monument in any hieroglyphs found in ancient Egypt, and so on. We find it incredibly intriguing that more was not made public regarding this amazing find, which leads us to suspect it may be a highly important, albeit highly controversial, discovery. 
we will continue to do research on Nahem's Bastet and will endeavor to keep you all informed regarding any notable findings. In 1879, British archaeologist Wayneman Dixon successfully retrieved a number of mysterious artifacts from within the infamous lower northern shaft of the Great Pyramid of Khufu. One of these artifacts was a small piece of a square wooden rod which has since disappeared. The only artifact to conveniently go missing and the only artifact which could have produced an accurate dating for what seems was a rather elaborate prior attempt to overcome a sophisticated array of blocking stones and vertical passageways which confront all who try to breach the innermost sanctums of this mysterious pyramid. The reason for this past mission, or indeed who undertook such an attempt, remain a mystery, but their motive will soon become clear. One of Wayneman's other finds, resembling a small grappling hook with two rivets, matches two holes in a square rod still lodged up in the vertical northern shaft, clearly left by these wannabe tomb raiders. It seems that these highly talented acrobatic grave robbers couldn't make it any further, and once one becomes aware of the existence of a large hidden chamber built into the pyramid's design, placed just above this unexplored shaft, you will inevitably begin to wonder what could possibly be hiding up there. Indeed, it's a well-known fact that the builders of these structures were notorious for their superhuman efforts in concealment. Huge multi-ton blocking stones in front of the entrances to their kings and treasures, and indeed in front of virtually every interior shaft and room within the Great Pyramid of Khufu. The upper region of this northern shaft constitutes the last remaining unexplored areas due to the impossible access angle. We know it's there, and all we have to do is apply existing technology in getting in there, Rudolf Gattenbrink told the press. It must be noted, although the mention of tombs has been made, the evidence to suggest such is based solely upon a number of parchments and a single mark found within an interior chamber of the pyramid naming a gang and the 4th dynasty Egyptian pharaoh Khufu. Egyptologists have taken these fragmentary factors and concluded that all pyramids were therefore built as tombs, the Great One being built over a 10 to 20 year period, concluding around 2560 BC. It seems the entire thesis of ancient Egyptian legacy is built around a few mentions of the pyramids as tombs. No mummies or burial artifacts except a tiny box claimed to be that of the sarcophagus of Khufu has ever been found in the pyramids. Additionally, and perhaps more importantly, Khufu's Egyptian civilization, along with all subsequent and prior dynasties, catalogued tremendous details regarding their existence, yet all, for some reason, seemingly forget to mention the construction of the biggest, most mysterious structures on Earth or indeed how they did it. What could there possibly be hidden within this chamber? This unexplored and clearly sought after secret room, a room which is seemingly unrobbable. With mainstream Egyptologists, archeologists and academic historians alike insisting that these amazing pyramids were once unquestionably tombs which were robbed completely over the millennia. Whatever this room contains, may settle this once and for all. How can one still claim the pyramids to have been tombs when they are aware of the astounding burial chambers found within the Valley of the Kings? With the tomb of the sons of Ramses II being not only the largest, but what many archaeologists believe, second to the pyramids and their accompanying sphinx, is the next greatest discovery ever made within ancient Egypt. A literal labyrinth of chambers, it was initially discovered in 1825, yet due to its gargantuan scale, it wasn't until 1995, and thanks to an Egyptologist known as Kent R. Weeks, that we have begun to re-establish its true possible size. The tomb was examined several times, even being investigated by Howard Carter himself, yet due to the outer tombs having been looted in antiquity. He simply used them as a dumping ground for rubble. It was not until 1995, during the Theban mapping project, when Weeks decided to clear the outer tombs. Approximately 70 rooms lined along long corridors, running far back into the hillside were found. 
The number of rooms were then said to correspond to the number of sons the pharaoh sired. However, further excavations have revealed that the tomb is even larger, the size of an underground town cut directly from a granite hillside, its true scale still unknown. As of 2006, at least 130 chambers have so far been discovered, yet work continues on clearing the rest of this underground maze. We feel that although a later civilization, one lacking the knowledge to build such monuments, came along and claimed these relics as their own, with the possible motivation of an illusion of power, like that of the many other sites we cover worldwide, predictably, now also conveniently tied to these groups in academia. Yet the true feat these chambers would have been, along with the riches these pharaohs often left behind, are not only proof that these creations and collections of wealth were not only far beyond the ability of copper-wielding academically claimed builders, but that the archaeological evidence does indeed support the theory that these kings either ruled during the creator's civilization or built these monuments themselves. Yet how remains an infuriating enigma. We also feel their age, and indeed original lineage in the true history of the Giza Plateau, is what ultimately becomes convoluted. Yet I digress. Who built KV-5? It is a place we find highly compelling.